I'll tell you what, vanilla and passion fruit are one of the best flavor combinations of all time. So on those grounds alone, this cocktail's worth making. I can't do anything about what it's called. It's, it's called what it's called. I'm Rob Report's resident bartender, Jason O'Brien, and this is the Porn Star Martini. So, the porn star martini, not invented by a porn star, invented by a bartender. So already we're in pretty good shape. It was invented in London in 2003 by a pretty exceptional bartender actually, a guy named Douglas Ankra. 2003 was a transitional time. A cocktail bar was a new and unusual thing. The whole world was spellbound by sex on the beach and drinks like that, but we were moving towards a time where flavor and balance were taken very seriously. And just as that was a transitional time, so I think of the porn star martini as a transitional drink. Like if it were invented today, you wouldn't do anything like what he did back in 2003. You really feel for the bartenders at this bar because of all the things they had to do every time someone ordered one of these. The way Ingram made it originally went like this. First, you have to make vanilla sugar. So you take five pounds of sugar and two vanilla beans and put them in a blender and blend it on high until you have vanilla scented sugar. Then to make the drink, you put two heaping tablespoons into a cocktail tin of actual sugar and then just, I guess, hope that all the sugar dissolves once you end up making the drink. Then he had to source fresh passion fruits in London, which is not exactly, you know, the ideal growing conditions. So he added passion fruit in two ways, a passion fruit puree and also a little bit of passion fruit liqueur, because I guess, why not? Then, even though they had vanilla sugar in there, they would use vanilla vodka as the base spirit, because as long as you're doubling up the passion fruit, you don't want the vanilla to feel left out. It'd shake the whole thing, and then he had to have a separate supply of fresh passion fruits, because he would cut one in half and garnish the drink with it, flesh up, bobbing up and down like a buoy. By the way, fresh passion fruits have the unhappy combination of being both expensive and ugly. Then he'd scoop a little vanilla sugar onto the actual passion fruit, just in case anybody wanted to eat it, and then he would finally serve it in a martini glass. Finally, in an entirely separate glass, he would serve it alongside a half glass of champagne, allegedly as a palate cleanser, but really just for the hell of it. Now, if you're in the UK, you already know this. The porn star martini is fantastically popular over there. But here in the US, most people have never heard of it. And even though it sounds like the redheaded slut and the panty dropper and any of that idiotic garbage from the 90s, there's actually a good drink in there. Now, I submit to you that making it at home or if you were inventing it today, you would never do almost any of that. Just as, I assume, you probably wouldn't name it a porn star martini. But hidden in here is a delicious and simple drink. So let's make one. First, the passion fruit. Now, you can technically make a passion fruit puree yourself. It's hard to find passion fruits. They're super expensive. I don't know, I don't recommend it. There's a lot of great passion fruit syrups out there. This is Small Hand Foods from the Bay Area, and it's great. There's also Liber and Company is also great. And whichever one you use, we're gonna start with three quarters of an ounce. Now, the cool thing about passion fruits is that it has this vibrant electric acidity that really makes the drink sing. This, more than anything, is what makes the porn star martini excellent. Next, vanilla. Now, you can use a vanilla vodka, like Ankara did, and that totally works. Or you can make a vanilla syrup, which I argue is possibly easier. So when I say vanilla syrup, you probably think that's too much, I'll just buy it. But honestly, it's a cup of water, it's a cup of sugar, it's a half of a vanilla bean, one of these things. Put those together, simmer it for five minutes on the stove, done. You have a vanilla syrup that'll last a month in the fridge, you can make dozens of drinks. With my vanilla syrup, I'm going to do three quarters of an ounce. Now, fresh passion fruits are super sour, so if you did use fresh passion fruits, that's enough acidity to balance the vanilla syrup. Because I used a syrup that has sweetness of its own, so I'm going to add a little bit of lime juice just to make sure the cocktail doesn't get too sweet. And I'm doing about three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Lemon juice will also work, but lime works better. Okay, so we've got sweet. We've got sour, now it's time for the vodka. Now you can use whatever vodka you like. This is one of my favorites for kind of all-purpose cocktail work, handily called All-Purpose Vodka by St. George in Alameda. And we are using two ounces of it. The vodka will be neutral. It'll just add proof and hopefully stay out of the way so the passion fruit vanilla combination can really shine. Now, if your favorite vodka is Tito's or Grey Goose or something else, do you need to like get this brand? Absolutely not. The passion fruit and the vanilla are the stars of this drink, and any minor differences that might exist between the brands of vodka will get totally drowned out 
by the flavors of these two. Now, we add ice and shake for about eight or 10 seconds. And now we strain up into a coupe or martini glass. And as a garnish, I am not bobbing a passion fruit in this because I don't want it to cost four extra dollars. So I'm just going to do a lime peel right on the top of the drink. Add some nice color and a little bit of zestiness. And this is the porn star martini. So let's see how we did. No, wait, I almost forgot. This was originally served in an unusual way. You need a sidecar of champagne. Ordinarily, this is the kind of thing that I would just, I don't know, ignore. The drink is good enough on its own, but there is something to this. Vanilla has a character where even if a drink's not too sweet, vanilla will be the last thing you taste. So sometimes vanilla registers as too sweet, even though it's not too sweet. So when you take a sip of the porn star martini, the vanilla will linger as the last thing you taste. And then here comes champagne and it washes it away. This is designed to be back and forth. Sip, 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 sip as a palate cleanser. It's great. The passion fruit comes in, electric tart, really lights up the sides of your mouth. But then the vanilla comes in and soothes it back down again. And at the end of the experience, vanilla is kind of lingering on your palate and then here comes champagne to save the day. And so this is a transitional drink and it's an important drink. Everybody was all into Cosmos at the time and this has fresh ingredients and it's a novel flavor combination and it's an important stepping stone in the evolution of what we now kind of all take for granted. You know what else would be good in here is raspberry. That was actually my, my wedding cake was raspberry, passion fruit and vanilla. It's one of my favorite kind of flavor trios of all time. And while this reminds me of that, that's also a problem because of the name, because you don't ever want to find yourself in a position saying, oh, this porn star martini really reminds me of my wedding. But what are you gonna do? 